Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. Today's video uh, is uh, building on my previous videos about MDiscs, um, this special archival grade um, optical media in DVD and Blu-ray. And what I thought I'd do in today's video is take a look at a couple of um, recommendations from different bodies regarding optical media storage, stuff you, if you really care about this stuff, and I know this isn't the most fascinating topic it's something most people back up and data protection want to just kind of not think about but if you are going to take it seriously and if you've uh, watched my previous videos on mdisc duplication then you're probably in that minority who really does take this seriously in which case uh, this info might be of interest we're going to be looking at two different sets of guidelines today uh, regarding optical media storage the first is this web page uh, from the Council on Library and Information Resources, that is uh, acronym is CLIR, and secondly from the Canadian Conservation Institute. This one's about CDs and DVDs. These are these web pages are a little bit old school, but the Canadian Conservation Institute one at least refers specifically to Blu-rays, and um, so if you're using Blu-ray uh, M discs, then that's going to be you know the most relevant to you. Um, you'll find a few of these on the internet, uh, you know, government archival bodies will just kind of put up these resources and uh, they're just intended and they're, they're, they're very similar. So therefore, you know, I'm going to, I just kind of picked two out of the haystack uh, to talk about here. So let's just take a quick look at this CLIR page. It's called conditions affecting uh, that affect CDs and DVDs and just some general um, guidelines. Now it says here, as with all other media types, Degradation is inevitable over time, but steps may be taken to prevent it from occurring prematurely. Now, in the case of the MDISC, this actually isn't accurate because uh, they're saying that data degradation will not be will not occur for 100 to 1,000 years. So I guess that is still inevitable, but uh, less at the at the at the scale of inevitability that uh, it doesn't really matter for most people. I'm going to just zoom in a little bit here so you can see this stuff better. So firstly, environmental conditions, your two concerns being temperature and relative humidity. <clears throat> Optical disc will perform well within a wide range of temperature and RH conditions. Discs kept in a cooler, less humid environment and not subject to extreme changes should last longer, okay? So if you're gonna be trying to find some place to store your M-Disc library, look for somewhere cool and look for somewhere with less relative humidity that's rh rh can be measured very easily using what's called a hygrometer it's a little thing you can pick up from amazon for a few dollars and it'll tell you the percentage of uh, water in the air so basically a dry cool environment is kind of what you're going for and one that doesn't suffer from uh you know a lot of so again these aren't things that are going to destroy your optical storage overnight we're talking here about keeping discs cold for months and years and i guess it's the case that that kind of these those temperature gradients are going to um, are going to you know um, do put the disc physically under stress, but over the course of time, we're talking long term stuff here. Optical discs stored in an opti optical environment will outlast discs that are not. That's a nice tongue twister, isn't it? Optical discs stored in an optical environment with will outlaw discs that are not. I'm gonna try say that after a few beers and see see how far I get. Storage temperature and RH range is recommended in various technical sources. So I find this really interesting. Like these different ISO standards exist. People have really thought about this. Like look at these bodies, the archive, National Archives of Australia, this ISO standard from 2020, 2002, the National Library of Canada. So let's just take a quick glance at what they're recommending. So these guys have slightly different temperature ranges, you know, between five and 20 degrees. Uh, for DVDs, um, we're getting a bit more uh, a bit more bullish here. DVD plus RW, uh, JJ Taylor in 2001, suggesting they can be stored from minus 10 to 50. Relative humidity, 30 to 50, five to, five to 90. And we've got two other factors besides the temperature and the humidity, and that's the, gr this, the gradient. So the gradient being the rate of change, right? So these guys, this ISO standard recommends a temperature gradient of four degrees Celsius per hour. The DVDs look, they're a little bit more robust. They, this, um, this JJ Taylor in 2001 says, well, they can handle 10 to 15 degrees per hour. Um, and RH humidity, they can handle an RH gradient of 10% 
change in re relative humidity per hour, uh, with some being more conservative in their recommendations. So those are kind of the ballparks. I think really, rather than thinking about these things, just the key takeaway for MDISC people would probably be, you know, try to put your MDISCs in somewhere cool and cold. that doesn't really get above, let's say, 30 degrees, ideally. Um, and that the, the temperature and the humidity also don't like very like a yo-yo during the day. So if you can find somewhere that's really stable and somewhere in this pretty big range, uh, you should be pretty good, right? So that's that. Um, <clears throat> and it said, if you're storing a very low temperature relative to the environment, the so th these guys really have thought of everything. The disks should be um, gradually warmed. So let's move off temperature and humidity. I think that's enough detail for, for most people. Um, light exposure, okay. Although the effect of light on ROM disks over time is not known, the effects of long-term exposure to light, for example, ultraviolet, infrared, fluorescent, under ambient intensity, such as room lighting, are generally thought to be so minimal that light is not considered a factor in the lifetime of the ROM disk. So uh, that's what the uh, CLIR is saying, that basically you don't need to worry about uh, light exposure. However, any effect of light on the disk would involve degradation of the polycarbonate substrate and would become noticeable only after several decades of exposure to daily storage facility lighting or sunlight through windows. So to play it safe, put them in a, in a don't expose them to light, I would say. Basically, they're saying it shouldn't matter, but I would say, um, you know, play it safe. However, regarding, that's reg that was regarding ROM disks. Regarding ARC, R disks, so this is your uh, Blu-ray R uh, that would be in this category. Prolonged exposure to sunlight or other sources of UV light can significantly increase the degradation rate of the dye layer in R disks. Now, I don't think this should apply to M disks because of the fact that it's not a dye-based technology, it's an engraving-based technology. Degradation of the dye makes it less transparent. As a result, some or all of the unmarked areas in the dye could be read as marks and therefore that's going to be error when read by the laser. So again, I, I, I come back to the previous point, uh, put it in a, why take a risk on any of this stuff? It shouldn't, I don't think, be an issue on MDISC, but why not just put it in a, in a, uh, in a, in somewhere not exposed to light. We covered moisture in relative humidity, but it's kind of stating the obvious here that any prolonged exposure to moisture, like from a spill, allows water to become absorbed into the disc where it may react with any of the layers. Um, so don't put your M discs in, don't store them in a bathtub, I guess, right? Because prolonged exposure, it's gonna seep into the disc. And as it says, the concern is that the, anything in the water, because it's your, your bathtub will, be not, will, will not be filled with distilled water. There'll be other chemicals. Uh, dissolved in that liquid, it might react with the disc and screw it up. So again, I don't. I think M disc should actually be more durable in this respect because of the fact that it's not dye based. But anyway, just FYI, here's just a few more tidbits that these guys have. I think they're interesting. Magnetism shouldn't affect them uh, CDs and DVDs. So like uh, uh, X-ray exposure should be okay, but don't put them in a microwave um, because they will destroy the disc. So I think that's a well-known fact of videos on YouTube. Um, here's something interesting. If you're thinking of using, posting your M disks to other folks, right? Um, so the US Postal Service and probably most postal services will scan stuff to counter bioterrorism threats. So they've actually done some testing at exposure levels of three, six, 60 to 300 kilograms of radiation and they found that the disks were unaffected. Um, there were no traces of residual radiation on any of the packages or, or disks. So I would say I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't worry about post, uh, uh, posting your M disks and that they're going to be scanned in transit based on this testing. Individual disk storage. So here's a bit more interesting stuff. Optical disks should be kept in individual storage containers until used and returned to those containers immediately thereafter. Um, Cases are designed to keep surfaces of the disc from contact with the inside of the case. Only one disc should be placed on the hub in the case. So that's your gold standard for M disc storage and optical storage is these jewel cases and not having them in those plastic things. Um, again, I'm not sure to what extent this really does matter, but that's what they're uh, recommending. Um, these guys really thought of everything. For long-term disc storage, 
it may sometimes be prudent to remove the label insert or booklet from inside the case and attach it to the outside, perhaps in a, th perhaps in a sleeve. In theory, the paper can attract moisture and produce higher moisture content in the case. So remember those, remember that if you can get those clear cases that don't have um, a label. So they're saying to play it safe, uh, you might want to do that. The jewel case, so the jewel case, I don't know what these slimline cases or snapper cases or amory cases are. Um, I think the jewel case is good enough. So that's your best. Um, so anything on the optical disc surface that impedes the ability of the laser to focus on the data layer can result in missing data as the disc is being read. Fingerprint smudges, blah, blah, blah. So don't get far in stuff um, on your disc. Um, and then scratches, obviously, um, if they're very superficial, it should be okay. But if the scratch, and this would, I think, apply to end discs as well. If the scratches are deep, they can get into the, where the data is engraved and that could produce uh, data errors. And then on the label side, they're saying for CDs, it can actually be more serious problem because um, the data layer is actually closer to the metal layer. So there you go. Um, oh, we covered the hot button topic of marking and we're talking about, remember we're talking about CDs and DVDs here. So when labeling a CD with markers, the composition of the, oh, sorry, I'm having a hard time highlighting this without scrolling inadvertently. When labeling a CD with markers, the composition of the ink in the marker and the styler design of the marker should be considered. The inks and markers vary in chemical conditions, blah, blah, blah. So basically, um, as I recommended in a previous video, if you wanna play it safe, you can write on the place where the data isn't stored. That's like right near the center. So that to me is the easiest solution. And they also make CD and DVD grade markers, right? So the point here is definitely valid. There are different chemicals and markers and the risk here, um, to eliminate the risk, water-based markers are recommended for CD labeling as a solvent, alcohol is generally less damaging than xylene and uh, toluene, which are common in aromatic uh, solvent-based markers. So they do make uh, CD, DVD grade markers and that's presumably what's in them, right? But just as an F uh, FYI, um, I, I just write on the inner side and I don't think stickers should be a problem. I'd be interested to see if they cover that. Um, most vendors sell CD safe markers and they actually mentioned for risk-free labeling any disc, it is best to mark the clear inner hub or the so-called mirror band of the disc where there are no data, okay? So I've shown this before. That's this part of the CD where my mouse is here. It's, it's the clear inner hub, right? There's no data stored there. So you can just take your marker and to be safe, use a regular marker. You could even find, you could even print if you figure out a way to print a circular sticker according to this diameter and do your labeling here, right? So that eliminates all um, all concerns if you just go here in the clear inner hub. Um, so there you go, application of adhesive labels. Oh, I was wrong. So they do, they do not like this. Adhesive labels should not be applied to optical discs designed for long-term storage. This label could delaminate over time and interfere with disc drive operation. The adhesive in some Earlier, earlier labels has also been known to react with the lacquer surface. Any attempt to peel the label off could damage the lacquer. So I stand corrected. Thank you for the commenter on YouTube who pointed this out. So yeah, um, what so what I would do, let's come back to this. My system is, is a letter and three numbers and then I keep a spreadsheet. So if you're building a backup library on optical, um, you could just take your marker and write. I, my system is A, I started with A001. So it's really easy to write here, A001, A002. So that's a system that gets you all over, over all the possible humps here. So they're saying don't use labels. Um, if a label is used, it should be, it should be again, a special type. Um, so yeah, these guys are hardcore here in their directions. Disc surface printing, thermal printing, um, inkjet printing, wear from disc play, uh, CDs and DVDs don't wear down, vinyl records do. Um, and there we go, guys. Wow, what a resource from the Council on Library and Information Resources uh, based out of Alexandria VA. Hard to find it more comprehensive than that. Let's just have a quick look at what the Canadians say. This is from the Canadian Conservation Institute or the CII. And this um, is a, I guess, a later resource because we actually talk about, um, we talk about BDRs and a BDR is a recordable um, Blu-ray. 
So to give you a little um, schematic here, and I think this would be very close to what an MDisc looks like under a microscope. So there's the top side, you've got um, the data is here, and then the bottom side, um, and the cover layer. And then in the MDisc, it should be engraved into this. Um, they say they do, they do have some observations, and I'm gonna just skip to these. Store disks vertically in standard size dual cases. So they're actually saying the same thing. This is the best practice. Paper or plastic sleeves are not recommended as, I, as they provide little physical pr uh, protection. They may interact chemically with the disk. Okay, that's a point. And or they scratch the disk surfaces. Use one piece polypropylene uh, cases for storage of disks that are handled frequently. Um, so they're saying dual disks are the best, uh, best thing going. And their recommendation, the recommended RH relative humidity range for extended storage is 20 to 50, with the RH never falling below 10, interestingly enough, don't get it too dry, and temperature of minus 10 to 23, with the temperature never exceeding uh, 32 degrees Celsius. So again, these recommendations con uh, accord, and basically don't put them in your attic, where if you live in somewhere like, uh, you know, um, I don't know, the equator, uh, where the temperatures might get up to like 40 degrees and then it's going to cool down really quickly at night which would cause a high temperature gradient especially don't put them in a very warm very humid attic with a high temperature gradient that's probably the worst uh, thing you could possibly do um and then um so that would be i would say those are my recommendations for mdisc based on a synthesis of all this information if you want to label them write it here storing them long term Keep it somewhere that is not quite cigar. Cigar is actually, I don't, for some reason, when I think of storage humidities, my mind immediately goes to cigars because I think cigars are 70 70 is the rule for humidors. So you don't want that. You want somewhere that's a bit less humid, 20 to 50. And you want somewhere that's pretty temperate, like minus 10 to 23. So, for, for instance, what, where I am originally from in Ireland. Uh, it would not be hard actually to find storage like this because uh, those it, that's kind of the parameters of the climate and I don't think you have to be super careful but if you want to really um, keep an eye on things it might be worth if you're if you have an MDisc archive buying a combination hygrometer and thermometer and just putting it next to wherever you're throwing your disc so you can keep an eye on it if you wanted to go wild with this you could have an iot one and set up some kind of alarming hey it's too humid or it's too blah 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 but that was 3d next level protection um i think that's it for today guys uh, for those looking at storing backup archives on optical media whether that's blu-rays or m discs um i'm gonna skip over dvds because i don't think people are really going to be using it these days or i can't think of a reason to so if you're doing your backup on-site, off-site, off-site on optical, on uh, uh, Blu-ray or M-Disc, keep these, um, you'd be well served to keep these guidelines in mind. Dual, single dual cases are best. Here are the guidelines and write, um, do your labeling if you're doing it at all on the uh, place on the disc where there's no data being stored. Thank you guys for watching. More videos coming.